welcome to Church Experience Online. We're so happy you joined us today. As you watch this teaching video, if you have any questions or need help getting connected, please don't hesitate to reach out by phone or email. Also, our website is the best place to go if you'd like to access helpful Growth Step resources. Join a serving team, connect in a life group, get your questions answered, or support this movement financially by giving online. At the end of this teaching video, you'll hear one of our Church Experience Worship original songs, and we hope that gives you an opportunity to worship and reflect on what you've learned. Thanks again for joining us at Church Experience Online. So growing up in high school, I was not really into school, to be honest. I mean, I, I was very activistic. I loved playing sports. I loved being with my friends. So school was not on the top of my priority list. So my dad thought it was hilarious when I went to college and I ended up meeting and then marrying a teacher. <laughs> he, he thought this was awesome. And, th and then when I went on to do my master's program, then I did four years of a doctorate program, my dad would just laugh so hard. He's like, from the guy who did not like school, like you married a teacher and then you just couldn't get enough of school. You just kept going and you just kept going. He just thinks it's the funniest thing ever. But I did learn something along the way. I learned through my education process that how you win, how you win at learning, how you win at school is you study and you get to know the right answers. That's, that's how you win school is you, you, you learn the right answers and, and you fill them out on the test or the quiz or the paper. And then and if you do well and you know the right things, then you succeed. But I, I've learned that in the study of God, which is what theology is and what we're after in this teaching series, that, that learning in, in my faith, that, that winning in my faith, if you will, is not the same way as I win in education. Because winning in education, I, I need to know the right answers, and that's, that's how I win. And, and it's important for me to know the right answers in my faith, but, but I heard someone say this. Did you ever know someone that's 10 times, that they, they knew 10 times more about the Bible than the average person? but they were not 10 times more loving than the average person. See, you don't win in your faith by just knowing the right answers. You see, Jesus spent a lot of his time on earth confronting the people who had all the right answers. They were called the Pharisees. They were, they were these legalistic, rule-following people who knew the letter of the law, but their heart was far from God. See, God's much more concerned with the implementation of our knowledge than our intellectual prowess when it comes to our faith. See, God wants us to apply what we learn, and, and I don't want to give you the wrong idea in this teaching series that in studying theology and learning more about God, that that's the ultimate end goal. It's not, because the end goal is not just to know more about God, it's to know God. It's to know God and walk with him on a day-by-day -day basis. It's to be in a close relationship with him. But the importance of theology cannot be understated. It's so incredibly important. Why? Because you live out what you believe. And, and your faith fuels your actions. What you in your heart and in your mind believe about God, your why, your why you do what you do is what determines how you do what you do. And, and knowing the right answer and how to do it the right way, that, that allows you to live out your love for God. And when you know how Jesus lived, who he was, what he taught, then you can know what God wants from you. I think if you will really study God, if you'll come to know really who God is, then you'll, you'll be able to know God's presence in your life. And that's really what I want for all of us is to experience God's presence, to experience more of him and life to the full in him. That's the heartbeat of our church. The mission of this church is to help more people experience life to the full in Christ. That's what, that's what we're after. And I think when it comes to education and learning, 
there's, there's no greater educational pursuit than theology. There's a lot of things that you can learn in life, and maybe you can remember some of the things you enjoyed studying in school, what your favorite or least favorite subjects were, but, but I would contend that there's no more important subject to study than the study of God, theology. I don't, I don't think there's anything more important. What has more consequence in our world than the study of God? What, ha what has more implications for your life and for mine and for our eternities, for our world, than the study of who God is and his presence and what he wants from us and how he wants us to live? I don't think there's anything more important. In fact, Jesus said it himself. He said, seek first my kingdom and my righteousness. Put, put that first. That's greatest. That's most important, our relationship with him. So we, we've been learning in this teaching series a lot about who God is, and if you've been with us throughout the series, we, we've, we've learned quite a few things. We, we, we've learned about the Trinity, our, our one God and, and three persons, this loving community that is our God, our God that is love. And we've, we've talked about the incomprehensibility of God, that we can't even fathom and understand all that God is, that he is the more that you've been looking for. We talked about the omniscience of God, how he's omniscient, all-knowing, he knows everything, and he knows your future. God, unlike you, knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He knows what's going to happen next month, next year, so because God's omniscient and all-knowing, you can trust him today. We've talked about just last week how God is omnipotent. He, he's all-powerful, and because God is all-powerful, we should honor him. He deserves our honor, and because we honor God, we, can, we honor others. And So we've, we've learned so much about who God is, but there's so much more. We, we can't exhaust it, but today I want to discuss this theological term, omnipresent. God, God is everywhere. He's present at all times, in all places. And, and I just have to admit to you, from someone who grew up around the things of God, that, that I just, I've missed this still, even though I've known this principle probably the majority of my life now, I have missed this so many times. Like, God is with me. I know that intellectually, but I can't tell you how many times, I can't count how many times I've missed the opportunity to experience God in a moment because stress took that away or fear took that away or worry took that away or problems or busyness or distractions. And, and just being aware of God's presence, it's a game changer. Just, I, I believe that you can come to the place where you are aware and you know that God is with you. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you, you have a friend that, that wears a certain cologne or a certain perfume, and, and you always know they're in the room, even if you're, you're looking the other way, and you might be engaged in a conversation, talking, and, 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 you know, they come in, they walk in behind you, and, yeah, I knew you were here, I, I smelled you, I, I smelled you, I knew you were here, and you just kind of know, it's like that cloud is around them, it's a good smelling cloud, thankfully, but you, you know, you know that they're there, right, it's, you can tell they're in the room, and I believe that we can come to the place in our faith journey where we just know. We just know, it's like, I, 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 no, I can't say, look, here he is, and I can, and I can see him and point to him, but, but it's like the wind, it says in Scripture. We, we, feel, we feel the impact of it, even though we can't see it and touch it and taste it, we know it's there, and we can come to the place where God's presence is felt and he's with us. And that'll, that's what I want for you, and that's what I want for me. I want more of that in my life, and I still miss it from time to time, and I just, I want us to know today and focus on the fact that God is omnipresent. That, that he's everywhere, that you can't hide from him. There, I, I titled this message, There's No Hiding Places, because God is everywhere. In fact, the, the, the great theologian from the 19th century, Charles Spurgeon, says, we believe that, that God, he, he fills all of heaven and all of the earth. He, he fills it. He's everywhere. Omnipresent means that, that God has no spatial limitations, that he literally is everywhere at the same time. It's a mystery. I don't understand it. I'll, I'll admit to you, I've studied this but I don't get it. My, my finite mind cannot understand the infinite and how God could be everywhere at the same time. But, but omnipresent doesn't mean that God is like this, this ambiguous space, this layer over everything, this, this feeling. It's, it's not that. He, I mean, he's, he's actually present at all places at the same time. In fact, he, he tells us that we're made in his likeness, and he tells Moses in, in Exodus 33, he says, then I'll remove my hand, God said this, my hand, so you will see my back, but not my face. So, so we're made in his likeness, and so the, he's a, a being, and we, it's probably different than what we can fully understand, but he is present all the time. He's not just spread out little parts of him. He's, he's, he's ever-present. And, and we believe that this has tremendous consequence for our lives, and it's so impacting, it's so important, because what keeps us from experiencing the presence of God is a lack of awareness. It's not that we don't 
know that God is with us. I think most of us probably believe, a lot of us probably believe that, that God's here with us, but it's that we don't acknowledge it. We're not aware of it. And it's one of the reasons I think it's so important that we, we gather together and worship. And maybe that's why God said in Hebrews, don't give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But meet together continually. We're, we're reminding ourselves that, that God is here with us and he's, he's present with us. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 23. God's word says, he says, am, am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Who can, I love this, who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, declares the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord. Do I not fill the whole world? And I kind of laugh at this. There's no hiding places. He says, who, who can hide that I can't find you? <laughs> you know, and God probably has to laugh at us sometimes because don't we do this? We, we kind of hide from God and, and we, we think that, okay, I'm gonna get away with this. You know, or, or we just, we get so busy, well, God's far, we, we even say that, you know, God's far off from me, or, you know, I don't feel close to God, and, and he's like, hey, I'm here, I haven't left, I'm still with you, I'm present, and I, I think the lesson that I want us to pull out of this, it's in your notes, is that, that I can run from God, but I can't hide from him. God will let you run from him. You can run from God, but you just can't hide from him. <laughs> and that's a good thing. It's because he loves you. He cares about you. He wants to be with you. He's, he's ever present. You know, in, in, in our culture, uh, these superhero movies have become a big thing. You know, and it's been a big thing for quite some time. And one of the classic superhero uh, stories and movies is the story of Batman. And, and Batman's known for like this vanishing deal that he does. So he'll show up and then all of a sudden, boom, he's gone. And you're in a conversation with him and then you look and you turn your head for a moment and where'd he go? Well, some people got together and they, they had a little fun with this. They made up a little, a little clip, it, kind of having some fun with Batman's disappearing act. Check it out. Batman. Looks like we're making progress. Well, we can track the money now, thanks to you. Lightly radiated bills. The mob doesn't know that the money's been marked. We should be able to trace it back to its source and prosecute. There's a willing DA. Harvey Dent. Can he be trusted? Well, he seems to be about the best that we've been. What was that? What, are you sinking away? No. Is this your little vanishing routine? What? Is this the part where I turn and then I turn back and all of a sudden you're gone? No. Everybody's impressed? Harvey Dent. Can he be trusted? Well, he seems to be about the. Seems to be about the best that we've got. Batman? <clears throat> uh, Batman? I found something. Oh, you, you found some? I found some. You found some something? Evidence. You found some evidence. I found evidence. You found some evidence over there. Here. Okay. Harvey Dent. Can we trust him? Yeah, uh, well, he seems to be about the bet. Wait. Okay. Wait one second. He's... Okay. Well, he's... Don't look for a second. He's the best we've got. Now? Wait for a second. Hold on. Okay, now. Wait, no, no, no. Now? Now. Yeah? No. Okay, now. About the best we've got. Got. Actually, could you leave that on? I dropped my wallet. I gotta go to bed. Probably my favorite part of that is where Batman is off to the side and, and, he, and he's hiding. It's like, Batman, is that you? Yeah, I, thought, I thought you disappeared. And, and I, I kind of see myself in that. I don't, I don't know if you see yourself in that, but I, I feel like there's times where I've kind of been hiding out and it's like, I, I, I think I'm good. You know, God, he's doing his thing over there. He doesn't see me over here. God, it has to be up in heaven like, are you serious right now? It's like, I, I'm there. I'm present with you. Just because you're not in church doesn't mean I'm not with you. You are the church. I, I, I'm there. I'm present. It's kind of like little kids. If, if you have little kids, nieces, nephews, you've been around little kids and, they, and they've ever want to play hide and seek with you. I'm talking like real young kids. It's, it's awesome. Isn't it? And it's so fun to watch them play hide and seek because what a little kid will do is when you say, all right, go hide. It, it, real young ones, they'll go hide in the, in the corner. Right? Or they'll go hide behind something and they'll close their eyes and they'll put their hands over their eyes. Because they think because they can't see anything, you can't see them. Right? And you come around the corner and there they are standing in the corner 
covering their eyes. And you're like, that's not a good hiding spot. But you're like, oh, where are you? You know, it's, God has to be doing that to us sometimes. Don't you think like we, we think we're off kind of like in our own area. God doesn't know this poor attitude in my heart. God doesn't see this sin that I'm partaking in or, or God's not with me. I'm, I'm filled with all these problems in my life. God doesn't care about, he's so distant. And God's like, seriously? Like I'm everywhere. I, I'm omnipresent. That means that's a good thing. That means I'm with you. And, and he'll let you run. He'll let you. He will. You can run from God. You just can't hide from him. He's everywhere. This is a good thing because God cares so much about us. But, but he'll let you run. And you'll look at the story of Jonah in scripture. Look at Jonah. Jonah did not want to do what God asked him to do. I don't like it. It's a bad assignment. I'm not for this. And there's a whole reason we could get into if we had the time. But he, he didn't want to do it. He didn't like it. So he ran from God. But he couldn't get away from God. He couldn't get away from God. The storm of consequence caught up to him and his escape plan was hijacked by God. He was supernaturally dealt with and God contained him until he turned back to God. Why? Because God cared too much to let him run. Run away from his calling, run away from his purpose, run away from the love of God. God wasn't gonna let him do it. He's like, you can run, but I'm gonna come after you because I care about you. And maybe someone's in here today and you're running from God. I mean, you're here in church, so you're like, well, I'm not really running, but, but you're running because, see, God is wanting to do something in your life, or he's calling something out of you, or he's calling you to step up or step out of something and do a new thing in your life, and, and you're kind of running from it. You're pushing God away, and I'm just saying you can't hide from him. He'll let you run. You just can't hide because he loves you that much. So do you have an escape plan right now? Have you edited or vetoed the authority and the power of God in your life? Because whatever your escape plan is, Jonas happened to be a boat in some destination far away. He thought, thought that would solve the problem. Whatever your escape plan is, it's in danger. All right, so, so whatever you're, in whatever area you're running from God, whatever your alternate plan is, I'm just saying that the storm is coming. And what I mean by running from God is I mean living in disobedience. So, so you can run from God in a relationship, but you need to tell your relationship that the storm is coming. You can run from God in your finances, but you need to tell your finances the storm's coming. You can run from God in your time and your commitment, but you should tell your time that the storm is coming. You can run from God in your character, your choices, your calling. So you, you can run from God, you just can't hide from him, then the storm is coming. And, and God said, Jonah, you can run, but the storm's coming because I love you too much to let you try to get away from my calling, my plan, the potential in your life. And I don't want you to wreck your life. I don't want you to, to ruin your life. Jesus said, hey, leave the 99 to go after the one because every one matters. It's a passion for us here at our church. And some of us wear it around our wrist. Everyone matters because every one matters. That means you matter. I mean, I matter. We all matter to God. He cares, and he doesn't want the one to get away because he cares that much. So let me ask you a question. What do you need to turn away from so that you can turn back to God? What is it in your life that you need to turn to God from because you've been running from him? Because you can't run fast enough to get away. You can't, and it's because God loves you. I walked out to the mailbox one time from a house and, and just to get the mail and come back in. I left the door kind of propped open, but I noticed curiously that when I came back to the house, Jennifer was no longer staying at the door and the door was shut. And I, I tried the door and it was locked. I'm like, did she just lock me out? <laughs> like she was fully aware of the fact that I was going to the mailbox. Right? We were engaged in a conversation. The door's shut. She's not there. And I start peeking in a window. And, I, and sure enough, she's standing inside the door like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I see you. Like, you, you locking me out? Are you serious? And she knew she was busted. I could tell she was laughing. She quick unlocked the door and she ran back into our house. I'm like, well, I, this isn't going to stand. So I chased her, right? I'm trying to find her. I'm going to get her or whatever. And I, I don't know where she is. I know she's down this hallway. So I go down the hallway and I'm like, babe, every time you hide from me, like seriously, throughout our 18, 19 years now of relationship, this summer will be 19 years we've been together. And, and I, man, I, I like every time you've tried to hide from me, like you always start laughing. Like you can't, you can't hide. Like it, it doesn't matter. I'm serious every time. So I'm like, I, I, know, I, know, I know I'm gonna find you. And I just wait like three seconds. All of a sudden I just, <laughs> she starts laughing. She's busted up. She's in the bathroom hiding behind the shower curtain. I'm like, what are you doing? You can't hide from me. Come on. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know how many times I have tried to run from God, but I've never been successful. Because you, there is no hiding places. Like God, he is in your life. He's on your Friday night as well as your Sunday morning. He's there in the evening and he's there in the morning. He's there when it's a bad time and he's there when it's a good time. See, God cares about you. He's ever present. He's always with us. So don't run from God. You can't hide from him. He's omnipresent and he loves you. 
You can run from what God wants to do in your life, what he wants to do through your life, but you won't run to something better. And what I found is that a lot of people run from God and what he wants to do in their life, but they run to something that they think is better because it looks shiny, it has a nice wrapper, it looks, well, that's great, or my friends look like they're enjoying that life, and I'm just gonna go live that life for a little bit. You fill in the blank of what that looks like for you, what the temptation is, but I'm, I'm gonna go do that. That's the easier road. And you're right, it is the easier road. It's called the broad road that leads to destruction, and the narrow, more difficult road of following Jesus is the one that gets you where you really wanna go. And God will let you run to other things, but you're not gonna get where you really wanna go. And he says, man, I love you, so I'm gonna pursue you. I'm present with you, even in your wanderings. And some of you, you might feel God's distant from you right now. You might have strong doubts. Listen, I wanna reassure you that God's not abandoned you just because you feel like you're kind of abandoning God. You can walk away from him, but he's just gonna follow you. He loves you. He's not gonna, he's not gonna leave you. He's not gonna forsake you. He cares about you. Think about the power of this. Think about the love of God in this. You, you have a Joseph who is in imprisoned literally, and God's gonna eventually take him to a palace, but he's imprisoned, he's falsely accused, but he's not alone. He's not alone in his prison, he's not alone in his hardship, and neither are you, God's present with him. Think about Daniel, Daniel stood up for his faith in a secular culture. Does it sound familiar to your workplace right now? He stood up for his beliefs and he followed God even though the government was not for him and there was, there was a lot of laws against him following Jesus and following God, and so he did, he prayed anyway, he was thrown in a pit of lions. He was all alone in the pit of lions with these hungry lions ready to devour him, but he didn't put his eyes on the lions. He put his eyes on his father. God, your, your will be done. I'm yours, whatever you want. I know I'm not alone. See, this is the power of it. The power of it is that you could feel incarcerated right now, incarcerated by your, by your choices, incarcerated by the consequences coming from others' choices, by your situation, your financial situation, your relationship situation. You can feel imprisoned. But just like Joseph, you're not alone. You may feel surrounded by the lions in your life. You may have some conflict going on or a marriage that's falling apart or things that you can't control and figure out or a boss that's against you. I'm just saying that you're not alone in that. And just like Daniel, God's with you in the pit. He's there with you. This is so powerful to think about the omnipresence of God. When you walk into your workplace on Monday morning, I hope that you'll be reminded of this, that you don't walk in alone. You walk in with the presence of the ever-powerful God that's with you and is for you. Interestingly, as we talk about the omnipresence of God, if you go back to the Old Testament, 1 Kings chapter 8, King Solomon had been given the assignment to build the temple of God. And, and, and he's, he's dedicating, he's literally praying a prayer of dedication to God over this amazing temple that, that God has tasked him to build. And in 1 Kings chapter 8, he prays something very interesting to me in, in his prayer in verse 27. He says, but will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, even the highest heaven, cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built. Yet give attention to your servant's prayer and his plea for mercy. Lord my God, hear the cry and the prayer of your servant is praying in your presence this day. May your eyes be open toward the temple uh, night and day, this place which you said my name shall be there so that you will hear the prayer of your, serv your servant prays toward this place. So, so he calls on God and he says, God, we want to experience your presence. I, ho I hope that's your heart cry. God, I, I wanna know you, I wanna experience you. But, but he also acknowledges in the same prayer, he says, God, even the highest heaven cannot contain you. So we're building this temple for your name. You've asked us to build this, but he says, this temple can't contain your presence alone. I mean, God, the highest heaven, the, the biggest space, cannot contain you. There's, there's more of you. So, so we call on God and we ask for his presence. We want to experience it, but his presence is already with us. It's everywhere. And, and the lesson I see in this and in your notes is that I call for God, but I don't control him and I don't contain him. A lot of us would like to control God. We'd like to contain God and compartmentalize him, but, but we can't. We don't. We, our role is to call on God and to invite God in and invite his presence into our, our, our experience and what we're doing. But but we don't control them, we don't contain them, we don't put them in a little space in our life. You can open up your heart increasingly to God, but, but he's, he's present, so we acknowledge him. And as you acknowledge the presence of God, listen, this brings increased joy in your life. This brings an unbelievable peace in your life if you're going through a storm, if you're going through something, that God's actually with you, that he's present in your life. I mean, it's, it's powerful. There's another term when it comes to the, you, um, the, the, the omnipresence of God. And it's called ubiquity, the, the ubiquity of God. It takes this omnipresent idea to another level, and it's saying that God is, is always present 
everywhere, but all of him is present. So not just like you've got a foot of God, you've got a hand of God, you've got the eye of God. Like the, the all of God is, can, is present everywhere at the same time. So the full love of God is with you all the time. The full, the full might of God, the full justice of God, the full mercy of God, the full wrath of God. The, 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 every part of who God is is fully present all the time, all of him. He doesn't just give you a part of himself. He's fully present all the time. And, and researching this, this idea, I came across this phrase that someone said, it's, it's impossible to avoid God. It's, it's impossible to avoid him. Have you ever been in a hurry, you know, going somewhere and you realize last minute, like you're going to maybe a birthday party and you got, oh, I got to stop and I got to get this. And, and you have like two minutes to make the stop, right? And so you, you run into Target, right? You run into Publix and you, you got to grab something and, 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 and you run in and you're like, I, I got to get in and I got to get out. But as you're shopping and you're grabbing that last minute item, you see somebody you know really well, like two aisles over. Right? It's somebody maybe you hadn't talked to for a while. And you know that if you engage in the conversation, it's going to be a long conversation. You're not going to get where you need to go. So what do you find yourself doing? You find yourself like kind of ducking and hiding. You're like, you're like okay, I'm going to wait. Okay, all right. Then you go and you're like, I'm going to check out real quick. I'm going to get out of here because if I get in the conversation, I'm going to be late. And I can't be late. Right? And then you think to yourself at some point as you're checking out or as you're walking back out to your vehicle, you're like, what am I doing? I'm hiding from a really good friend. <laughs> I, I'm hiding from a friend because I, I don't have time to talk. This is, this is crazy. This is madness. You ever find yourself doing that with God? I, I, I'm not going to go to church. Just, I, and maybe you would put it in these clear words, but man, I, just, I know I haven't been living right. and I don't know. If I go and I worship, I don't know. I don't feel like that's right. I feel like i got to kind of get things in order. Then I should go. And God, God's like, you're hiding from Someone who loves you, your best friend. Like if there's anywhere you should go and your life's not in order, come to me, let me help you fix it. Like you don't need to hide from me. I already know about it. Like, come, right? Or we're so busy or we're overwhelmed and we find ourselves ducking and covering. I don't have time for the word today. I don't have time for prayer. And, and God's like, I'm your best friend. When, when you're busy, that's when you need me the most. That's when you should lean in, not, not drift away. Like, and, and God, he, he's ever present. And this is so powerful. We come to know this, that, that we, we can't control God. We can't contain him. We'd like to compartmentalize God and it seems safe to put him just on our Sunday morning or and our, even this, even mature believers will do this. We'll, we'll, we'll put God on our, our time alone with God, my morning quiet time. God, I'm gonna give you this space and maybe it's a lot of space, but I'm gonna give that to you. But then that frees me up to go do whatever I wanna do throughout the day and I can say whatever I want, I can live however I want. And no, God, God didn't stay in your quiet time. He, he didn't stay there with your devotional book on your nightstand. He, he didn't stay there. God is going with you to your work. God's going with you with your friends when you're going hanging out. God's with you in your car in traffic, in bad traffic when somebody cuts you off. God's there. I'm just saying. All right? I'm just saying. I know I'm getting in your space, but, but, but God's there, and, and he loves you, and he cares about you. And, and the, the beauty of this is that the, the God's time is all the time. It's not just church time. It's all the time. And, and God wants you to serve him, but not just at church. We have an amazing serving church here, and it's incredible the people that serve and get up early and come in late after the third service into the evening and breaking down here till like 9 o'clock at night and people that serve during the week and open their homes for life groups. It's amazing to me how much we serve. But, but did you know that God says, hey, don't just try to contain me on Sunday. You don't just serve me here. You serve me throughout the week. You serve me all the time because you're the church. The church, we've, if we've learned anything in this three years of being a church plant, we've learned that the church is not a building. I and mean, we're meeting in a public high school and we're worshiping God here. We can worship God in the field. We can worship him anywhere. The church is not a building. The church is a people. So we serve God all the time. We follow him. We live for him all the time, 24-7. There's a progression, I think, that, that we go on as, as we mature in our faith. And it might start with Christmas and Easter. It might become once a month. It might become a weekly thing. Hopefully at some point it becomes a daily thing. You feed yourself spiritually every day. But then I think there's even another level of not just a daily thing, and, and this is my time with God, there's like a moment by moment kind of way of living where it's like, God, I'm, I'm aware of your presence all the time and everything I'm doing and how I'm living. Like God is with me every choice I make, every road I take, God, God is there with me. Like that's, that's the presence of God, the omnipresence of God. He's always with me. So what do you need to change to experience and to serve God more consistently throughout your life to, to live for him? Where are you on that progression? For you, is it a weekly thing? It's a monthly thing? Maybe it's a daily thing, and that's great, but, but could it be a moment-by-moment -moment thing for you? I'm just saying there's more of God than what you've tapped into yet. There's more of him. Psalm 34, such a beautiful psalm, verse 1. It tells us, it says, I will extol the Lord at all times, and his praise will always be on my lips. 
Uh, I, I will always worship God. I will praise him. And maybe you just need to get some praise music going on, on your phone and, and in your vehicle, on your commute. Maybe you need to, need to bring that worship more in to help you during the week. Maybe it's finding ways to, to get scripture and God's word throughout your life more. But, but bring God's presence in more. Bring him in more into your life and, and experience it more. It's just incredible what God will do. See, here, here's the lesson. It's in your notes. God is everywhere, but I must choose to meet him somewhere. He, he is everywhere. But, but you've got to find a time and a place to meet with him. You've got to decide in, in any and every moment, like, God, I want to be with you. I want to be present with you. I want to experience you. See, see God, he is everywhere, but you've you got to meet him somewhere. And, and, the, and, the, and the scary side of this is that God can be everywhere, yet at the same time be nowhere in your heart and nowhere in your mind. Because you're not, you're not aware. You're, you're thinking, all right, I'm just doing my thing. And God's like, I'm here. I'm everywhere but you're not giving me any space. You, you, you're, not, you're not allowing me to walk with you. And he, that's what he desperately wants. He wants to be somewhere in your life. He wants to be everywhere in your life because he is. So as we began the church planning journey, we were about to step out and we we're about to leave our families up north and we were uh, just leaving a, a solid job and, and we had a pregnant wife and we had health insurance and we had a paycheck and we had all this security. We had family around us. We had friends and we'd been there five and a half years. We'd, we, were, we were comfortable and life was good and, and we knew that God was nudging us to, to start this church and, and it meant leaving everything and going completely into the unknown without any promises and the, the, the immensity of that was beyond us. And I, I had in that process had a, a good close family member, Jennifer's papa. Um, in his 90s, great man of God, a farmer in North Carolina. He passed away. We went to his funeral, and they gave us this, this program in that time, and it, it was very uh, representative of his life, and it had one of his favorite verses on the back. And um, I just used this funeral program as a, a bookmark in my Bible in that season as we were preparing to leave and go into the unknown. And I started reading this verse every day when I would do my normal Bible reading, I would also read that verse that was on the back of the program. I just started reading, I, I liked it, and it kind of felt meaningful with the loss of someone I loved. And, and I, I just kept reading it, and I ended up reading it pretty much every day for a year. And in the process, somewhere months into this journey, I was speaking at a men's retreat up in Michigan, and I was there uh, with my brother-in-law, and we were bunking together, and, and there was a little nightstand between our, our beds, and, and the camp that we were speaking at, this Christian camp, had left some uh, verses, little cards that someone had made and left randomly on the nightstand. And as I was going to bed before I hit the lights, I saw these and I picked them up and the first verse was, you know, in, in Thessalonians. And I, I set it down. I'm like, oh, that's, that's a cool verse. I'm going to set that here. And then I, I pick up the other one and I, I'm reading it and I'm like, huh, wait a second. That's the, verse I, that's the verse on the back of that program. I've been reading this verse every single day for months out of the 31,000 plus verses in the Bible. Out of any verse that could have been here, this exact verse is the one that I've been reading every single day. And to me, that was so powerful, so meaningful, because in that moment, I knew God was speaking to me. I knew he was saying, Brandon, this verse that you've been reading, which is all about the fact that I'm with you, this was placed here for you so that you would find it and you would know that, that even here in this random campground, as you're preparing to go into the unknown, your whole world's about to be <laughs> shaken up, I'm with you in that. And I'll never leave you. I'm, I'm there with you. And I want to read this verse. It's so meaningful to me. I'm just going to read this for you today. And maybe this will be meaningful for someone here today. Maybe you can take the promises of this scripture from, that are from God for you. You can take those into your week. Maybe this can be a reminder of God's presence in your life. 40, uh, chapter 41 of Isaiah, verse 10. God says, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Whatever you're going through, God's present. He'll uphold you, he's with you, he cares about you. You don't have to hide from him because you can't, because he loves you, he's omnipresent. His presence is powerful, it brings joy, it brings peace, it brings hope. God is with you. And if you will walk with God, you will find that God is walking with you. Right on. Thanks for joining us at Church Experience Online. Please don't forget to check out the website if you'd like to get more connected, learn more, get your questions answered, or support this movement financially. You're now going to hear a Church Experience Worship original song, and we hope this gives you an opportunity to worship and reflect on what you learned today.
holding on to the promise you fight for. Climbing over the mountain 